Good morning. In this video, I'll show you how I turned our fridge into the ammo dump from Borderlands 2. Nobody does bullets better than Marcus Munitions. Don't be a stranger unless you're broke. Then strange away. You've got enemies and I've got ammo. You know where to find me. I started with my blank fridge and freezer. Took some separate measurements of both. I used this high resolution image as a reference throughout the build and I'll link that in the description box below. I took my measurements into Photoshop and added a guideline to separate the fridge and freezer. Added another guideline at the bottom for the get loaded before you get wasted part of the fridge. Two vertical guidelines for the frame. Because the reference image is a different dimension to the fridge and freezer, I take each individual element and place them around to suit. For each element, I figure out what size I want it to be, stretch it out to fit, turn it to black and white, then lower the opacity to save on ink when printing. If the element you're working with fits on one sheet of A4 paper, then just press print and you're ready to go. With a larger element like the shotgun shell, it's going to take up several pieces of paper, so I will show you how I go about dealing with that. Here I have just the fridge dimensions and I stretch out the shotgun shell to suit. I then set up some A4 sized grids, crop and save each individual grid section, print it, tape it together and then cut it out. I then hold it into position just to make sure I did everything right. Moving on to the get loaded before you get wasted, which is some good advice for in-game and real life. The font that looks the most similar and the one that I used is TWCENMT bold. I have no idea what that means. I'm going to look that up now. Oh, well, there you go. It means 20th century monotype bold. I changed the properties of the font to be in all uppercase letters and the height of each letter to be at 400%. Here I'm using the spirit level to mark a straight line where I think I want this bottom element to go. Marking out the frame lines and keep checking back to the reference image. I bought the cheapest yoga mat I could find to create a bit of depth in this build. I probably should have spent a little bit more and got one that didn't have this texture to it. Use the measurements and a straight edge to mark out the size that you'll need. And then cut it out with some scissors. The border has curved corners, so I used a bottle to trace around and then cut out the corner. Check all your measurements and make sure you're happy with their location. I attached just about everything in this build with contact adhesive. Okay, time to really get started on this. Once you have the contact adhesive on both surfaces and it's no longer tacky to touch, it is time to place them together. Well, there's no going back now. I started to have my doubts and for the next couple of days, I was regretting starting this. Do the same thing for the piece on the fridge. This bowl ended up being the exact same size as Marcus's emblem, so I used this to help me along the way. Traced around the bowl on some plywood. This isn't the best quality plywood, but it was free, so I'm gonna make it work. Cut out Marcus's head and then trace that onto the plywood as well. And then cut those two pieces out with the jigsaw. Gave both pieces a bit of a sand with the 120 grit on the sander. Using the printed sheet as a stencil, I placed that on top of the circle piece and trace around the shape of the head. With some carbon paper, I then trace over the details. And the same thing for Marcus's head. Starting with the yellow, you could use poster paint or acrylic paint if you wanted to. I use sample pots of house paint because it's thicker and you only really need one or two coats. I used white acrylic paint for his face because I don't have a sample pot of white. Carefully paint on all the black details, paint it on the white writing, then the black around that. Held that into position to see how it looked. Not that I could change anything at this point anyway. Add some PVA glue, spread it around, carefully place on Marcus's head, lay a t-shirt over the top and gently place on a weight until the glue dries. Working on the angled stripe piece, I cut out all my lengths to the same size. 
add on the contact adhesive and place those strips on top of that. I just used an offcut for the middle just to bring that up to the same level. Moving on to the shotgun shell. I already have him printed and cut out so I take him outside and trace around him onto some plywood. For the smaller cutout sections I first drill a hole and then use the jigsaw to cut out as much as I can. I then finish up the holes with the Dremel tool. Gave the whole thing a bit of a light sand, placed him back on top and used some carbon paper to trace on some of those details. Blocking out some of the base colours and then adding some highlights and shadows. Then adding the thick black outlines to bring it together. This whole process takes some time so I just work on one little section at a time. For his left hand shoe I cut out an extra piece of plywood for the sole just to add some more depth. Adding on the shadows and highlights onto that base coat. Moving back to the fridge for a little bit, I used some PVA glue as a base coat to cover all the foam. Yep, that just dripped onto the floor. After the PVA glue has dried, I then move on to painting the fridge. I bought a sample pot of this beautiful Brunswick green. Started by painting around all the small, hard to get to places. And then used a small roller to paint on the larger areas of the fridge. This took three coats until I was happy with it. I wasn't really liking the large gap between the fridge and the freezer, so I was trying to come up with something to fill that. I ended up using the edges of a thick mat that I had and I just used the scissors to cut off the tabs. Cut that to length, although I do change that up a little bit later on. Contact adhesive on both surfaces. Glue that into position. Yes, it's ugly. I'll come back to that later on. Actually, I don't think I do, so I should probably try and explain that now. So I set that foam strip back from the edge a little and then I used that same textured yoga mat as we used earlier to bring that out level with the rest. I also cut the ends of the foam shorter to bring it in line with the border because it ended up interfering with the hinges. Painted the top triangle section yellow. To dirty up the yellow a little bit, I mixed in some orange paint and drying retarder, then with a fluffy brush, I buffed that in all over the yellow. For the lighter green rays behind the shotgun shell, I mix in some yellow and white with the Brunswick green. I keep checking back at the reference picture while painting on the rays. Now that that yellow paint has dried, I cut out a star template on a piece of paper, trace around it, then fill it in with black acrylic paint. I added a white base coat to that angled strip. To mark out for the black lines, I just used the width of my ruler at the top, bottom and middle. And then carefully paint in between the lines with black acrylic paint. This would have been so much easier if the yoga mat wasn't textured. On the right hand side of that strap, there is some grey banding, which makes the white sections look like highlights. When painting on these grey sections, make sure you keep that straight line vertical with the fridge, not at 90 degrees with the strap. Time to glue on Marcus. It was only at this point that I held some hope for the fridge. Cut out some little rectangle pieces from the yoga mat. I then attached those with some super glue. Painted those white and then lightly sketched on some detail lines. After going over my sketched lines with some black acrylic paint, I then moved on to adding some white highlights around the edge of the fridge. Adding on some more white details and doing the same with the black paint. I'm constantly checking back with the reference image and I just keep adding the details that I can see. Moving on to the sides of the fridge, it's pretty basic, the strap is just the same process as it was on the front adding in some spills, drips and splashes. I also tried adding in my name, but I don't really like it. Moving on to the bottom of the fridge, I first sketched out some lines, added the yellow paint. While the first coat of yellow was drying, I moved on to the black framing lines around that yellow and white border. The thicker and messier these lines, the better, or at least that's what I was telling myself. I'm not sure what this side of the ammo dump looks like, so I just added some more grey. 
marked out for the black lines. I mixed up this lot of black paint way too runny so I ended up just exaggerating all the drips and it worked out quite well. Now that the bottom section has a couple of yellow coats it's time to messy it up a little bit. I used that light orange from earlier to smudge all over the yellow. I then mixed up a darker batch with orange and brown. The idea here is to create a bit of an ombre effect going from dark on the left to light on the right. Time to trace on the words with some carbon paper. I should have waited for the orange to fully dry before doing this. You can see all the smudgy carbon here that I am not very impressed with. Paint on the writing with the Brunswick Green. Paint a black border around all those yellow sections. Pencil in some of the details that you can see on the reference image. And then go over that with the black acrylic paint. Cut out some more of those rectangles from the yoga mat, because what else are you going to use a yoga mat for? You know where to find me. Super glue those into place. Moving on to the words ammo dump. I first figure out where I want that to sit. I then make a mark on either end of the paper where the fridge freezer line runs. Connect the dots. I don't end up using the plywood for this, but if you owned a bandsaw or better quality plywood, then this would probably be a nice option. Why is it always windy when I'm trying to do this? Trace around your letters with the carbon paper underneath. Don't forget to draw in that fridge freezer line. For the cutouts in the letters, just pick varying sized drill bits to suit. I just drilled a hole either end and connect them up with the jigsaw. The plywood was chipping and flaking and I was really starting to get annoyed. Lucky you can't actually hear me here. Testing out what sanding might look like on this yoga mat. It's not bad, so I go with that. Comparing the unsanded side with the sanded side and I'm thinking with a bit of PVA glue this will work out okay. Black carbon paper on black foam? Yeah, that's not going to work. I first cut out and trace around the holes in the letters, then cut out the letter, trace around that. Since there are three M's, I figured I'd just trace around the one I'd already cut out. I used a scalpel to cut out the smaller sections of the letters. I've marked the fridge freezer divide line onto the ump. Cut along the lines. I ended up cutting out the rest of the M's anyway because I used this as a stencil for the fridge, holding the sad stencil in place and lightly tracing around the letters. I used the contact adhesive again, but I think I would have gotten away with the super glue. I should have chosen something else to put the ammo dump on because this fridge freezer dividing line has proven to be a pain in the butt. Moving back onto the shotgun shell and looking at the reference. The fridge face has quite a curve to it, so I'm just going to put the contact adhesive in a straight line. Place him on and move back up to painting the words ammo dump. Do a couple of coats of white. Adding in some grey detail, I match this line in with the one from the angled strap. Add a bit more grey to some places and moving on to the black outline. Let's move on to the grenades. This is three days later and yes, it is windy again. Traced on both grenades, cut them out. Hey sheepy. Give them a bit of a sand. When I started sanding this one, I realized that there was a hollow channel underneath the first layer that ran the full width of the grenade. So I fully sanded it back, mixed up some two part epoxy putty, also managed to get this all over my phone. Rolled it into a snake and placed that into the channel. Let it cure overnight, sand it back and it's as good as new. Use the carbon paper again to trace on the details and then start blocking out the base colors. For the highlight green, I used the same color from the rays on the fridge, painted on the gray, and then just before I started painting on the black edging, I realized that I forgot to cut out these pieces. Carefully drill a hole. Try not to do this. I'm gonna keep this bit and glue it back in later. I have spent so much time on this already, I am not starting it again. I can't seem to find where I put the Dremel tool, so I just keep wiggling the drill bit around until I get the basic shape and then try and clean it up a bit with some small files. Super glue that little piece back in and then paint on the black. 
I think this is my favourite step, it's really amazing what a bit of black paint can do to the piece. Lightly mark on the fridge where the grenades will be going. Contact adhesive on both surfaces. Wait until it's no longer tacky and then press them on. Working on some more of the finishing details. I got better at this as time went on so I will show you my current process of doing this. Put some black paint on the end of the brush. Paint a solid circle. Mix in some water with a little black paint. Remove a bit of the excess onto some paper towel and then start working that in the center of the black circle. Keep bringing the paintbrush back to the paper towel to remove any of the excess. The dry brush draws away the wet paint from the center of the circle, leaving you with this really nice effect. I painted the bottom tabs with some antique white and then brushed over it with some of that light orange. Looking at the reference image again to draw on this large cracked piece, Using that same effect from earlier for that large black section, added a few white splashes and white details. Once the fridge was finished, I wanted to protect all the paintwork, so I bought this satin clear coat. This was the most expensive thing so far. When they say a well-ventilated area, they actually mean a well-ventilated area. I didn't feel like unplugging and carrying the fridge outside, so I thought I would try painting it inside. I did the obvious things like protecting the bench tops and the floor with some paper, but whoa, instant headache. I painted the rest of it as quick as I could, turned on all the fans, opened up all the doors and windows and went for a drive for a couple of hours. If you like Borderlands or other kinds of builds like this, then you might want to check out some of my other videos. If you like this video or found it somewhat helpful, then give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give me a thumbs down if you like, but either way, I hope to see you next time. Tell your friends and your enemies. You see something you like, better have the money to pay for it. Looking is free, but it shouldn't be.